So uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. No, it's late. Um, obviously, there's a lot of really great stuff going on with the web, uh, but it seems to me it's also becoming increasingly fragmented. Um, and the ways that we fight that fragmentation aren't really available. I'm speaking of mobile Safari and Apple and iOS. Um, you know, the ways that, that we fought this before was giving users better choices, so Chrome and Firefox, et cetera. Um, on iOS, Chrome is just a skin of WebKit. It's just a wrapper around it, right? So we don't even have that option to provide a better experience. So I guess my question, slightly rhetorical, but mostly to Alex, because you're on the standards committee, you know, what is your thought about getting Apple to come to the table and getting Service Worker in, you know, honestly? So I will say that, um, thanks, great question. Uh, our friends at Apple do show up to the Service Worker face-to-face -face meetings, and they are our friends. I mean, that, that isn't rhetorical. They are actually friends and colleagues who work with us on almost every level of web platform to try to make the web a better platform. So there are areas that they care about more than others, and that is their prerogative, right? They get to choose which areas they care about in their implementation. That is, every, every browser vendor enjoys the same prerogative. Um, they can't deny it to us, we can't deny it to them, right? Would that I could, <laughs> but I can't. So it's incumbent on us then to make the case uh, in whatever way we can, that this is an important feature that developers need. So one way is to show use. And that is to say that if you choose to build a thing that uses service workers to make your site great on F Firefox and on Opera and on Chrome and on IE, um, and that is a measurable difference. M my old boss, Linus Upson, used to say, phrase your question in the form of a benchmark if you want to get a browser developer's attention. <laughs> And this is absolutely true. Uh, <laughs> phrase your question in the form of a benchmark. So make a beautiful site that works really, really, really well. That's gorgeously fast. It's silky smooth offline. That is consistently reliably fast using service workers. And this will bleed into the, the ether that we all have to live in. I, I can't say that anyone will say yes to a new feature that they fundamentally disagree with. Right? The Chrome team has features that we're just not gonna add. Right? We, we have broached enormous political disagreements with other companies on the basis of features that we just don't agree with. And Apple is, you know, they have the right to say no. Um, and, and maybe they're right, right? You know, my pet feature, maybe they think it's a terrible idea, maybe they're right. But um, all browser vendors are in the business of saying yes to developers eventually. I, so, I, from, from my perspective, <laughs> it, it is on. Yes. Yeah, so, fr from my perspective, I think that what you're seeing from where you're where you're sitting is actually not as much an artifact of Apple being recalcitrant or anything like that. It's it's actually more of an artifact of the way that they work. Um, Mozilla and, and Google have sort of a, I guess, have the opportunity and privilege of being able to work in the open. And so you're, you're seeing versions of service workers that... A little rough. The, yeah, let, let, let's face it, a year ago in Chrome, service workers probably weren't the thing that you wanted to put product on, right? You don't Knowingly so, like we shipped early to, to get feedback. Right, right. right. And, right. and so people were experimenting with it at that point, and that was, that was something that Chrome could do at huge risk. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but you saw a benefit in doing so because you were getting the feedback, whereas Apple, on the other hand, have corporate policies and various other things that may, mean they operate in a different way. The so way I think about this is that every, every browser vendor has second mover advantage, yeah. right? There is sure. a first mover disadvantage, which is unusual, right? If you're, if you're building a regular product and you're shipping it out to the market and you go first, you have first mover advantage because you get to define the marketplace, you get to set the terms, you get to introduce people to the concept, and that's hard frequently, but if you're first, you've got, you've got a lot of upside, potentially. In the browser space, Compatibility is paramount, which means that the second person gets to say, no, your idea was stupid. 
right? right? So service workers are to a place where the third person is going, the fourth is on its way, right? You know, second second mover has moved. Um, this is clearly something that that is it has got some momentum. Now it could be just as bad as App Cache was. I showed you the slide earlier that says the can I that shows you the can I use of App Cache, and everyone can, but nobody should. Um, it could be just that bad. Uh, jury may be out. Okay. And we've uh, had a bunch of discussions about, let, let's be clear, service workers has been pretty rough in various. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and right. hopefully we've we shifted agreed subsets on everything. And, and iterated yeah. from there, yeah. So, But it is the thing we have now, and we're going give it to give it a good shot. Yeah, so think of it as as us working through the natural process of growth in a new feature, and there will always be someone who goes, I don't know. And the best part about this, though, um, and this isn't always true, every feature can't work this way, but service workers can, which is that it's network progressive enhancement. You can simply build a great website, and it will work well on every browser. And if you build a great website that is then better with service workers, your website is even better on browsers that support it. So if you keep that in mind as you're building your app, um, you're set up for success, whatever Apple chooses to do. I, okay, have some follow-up. I'll let this <laughs> First, thanks. This was an awesome presentation, very exciting stuff. I think you're addressing a really compelling story and need. One of the things that solutions and compelling solutions create are other problems. One of the ones that uh, occurs to me that you guys probably have thought about already is uh, I call it the bookmark problem, which comes with a home I home icon. Every you know everybody wants to add an icon to the to that limited real estate. Um, I one of the thoughts I had was the ability in your package to at least give a category to your icon so that it could self group. That would be really interesting, and also to learn how people group. So you might suggest groups. But I'm interested in what you guys have thought about with that home screen icon. Um. So the first thing is, uh, yeah, we see basically every site you land on would want to be an icon on your home screen if it could be. And if everybody was, it's like zero value to anyone because you can't find anything. So totally agree with the problem. <clears throat> so one of the things that we've done to try and improve this is to only suggest that the user adds a site to the home screen if we think they're going to want to use it on the home screen. Um, so that's something that kind of helps avoid the issue of you ending it with too much. Um, in terms of automatic categorization and stuff, I think those ideas are very interesting. I think to some extent we're limited in what we as a browser can do on different operating systems. So on Android, for example, um, I think we have some limits as to how, how we add things to the home screen. We might not be able to know what else they have and put stuff in certain places. But yeah, we should definitely explore those kind of things. And I would love to see us try and do more to solve the, that kind of issue. Uh, so, a little bit more practical question. Um, do service workers replace uh, um, cache headers? So, like, do, do you get to just basically set use service worker in lieu of you know your your standard cache headers? Um, so you could you can use them in addition to to cache headers, or you could use them to replace. It's it's really what you want. Um, the service workers kind of live under the browser cache. So when a network request goes from the service worker to the browser, it's gonna go from the service worker to the browser cache to the network. Um, so if you want to kind of cache things the way you are, like above the service worker, so to speak, um, you can keep doing that. Or if you want the service worker to control everything, you can do that as well. Um, is there a recommend, like, you know, say there is this day where service workers take over the world and every browser has them. Um, is, the, is the best practice then just use a service worker? Or is, anything, is there any use for the cache headers, basically what I'm getting at? I mean, it's, if, if you're viewing it as more of a progressive web app, um, you probably still want to have normal cache headers. But if we live in a world where every website is service worker, it's always installed, maybe not. But remember, there is still a step, even when the browser supports service worker, to install the service worker. Um, so you still might want to consider having the cache headers there. A mild asterisk on that, which is that in the install phase of a service worker, you frequently wind up requesting resources that have been requested by the page that's installing the service worker itself. And those get cached by the HTTP cache. So one of the best things for total network use is that if you serve those sub-resources with an expires that's not zero, you can frequently take advantage of the HTTP cache to keep those things for you so that when you go and keep them later in the service worker install phase, you're not going to the network for them again. Gotcha. All right. 
Thanks a lot, guys.